stand up here today with a lot of mixed feelings, um, happiness, joy, excitement. But most of all, I can't imagine what my day is going to be like on Sunday. I've already asked Rajiv for a new role, but he's still considering. <laughs> the past three weeks of the Dunya Young Business Leaders program have really been an amazing three weeks. I think I'll hear from the students, but for me at least and for the team. We had, an, we had amazing energy throughout the office, which has invigorated us all and made us feel young again. And we're all going to miss that tremendously. Um, I actually just can't believe they flew by in a second. In the beginning, we were counting day one, day two, and then all of a sudden, we're on day 15 and the program is over. The Junior Young Business Leaders program is really the brainchild of our CEO, Rajiv Kakar, who you'll hear from shortly. He's always wanted to implement such a program, as education is very dear to his heart. So with the support of everyone here, with the support of our speakers, some of them are with us tonight, and thank you for that, with the support of the Dunya mentors, and they're across the room, you'll hear from them also later, from, the, from our different partners, and from the students most of all, thank you for your support. I have two wonderful ladies who worked with me on this program, who are Hajar and Rose. Can you guys stand up wherever you are? Hajar, okay, they're already standing up. Yeah. If it wasn't for them and for everybody's support, we wouldn't be where we are today. We started working on this program several months ago. And we put together a framework, we decided on the workshops that we wanted. It turned out we needed 40 speakers to come together to put these workshops together. That was our wish list, and thankfully we managed to achieve our wish list. And not just any speakers, but the top-notch speakers in their industries or experts or entrepreneurs. We started taking it step by step. So we did the usual, we did ads, we went to schools, we did visits, but no applications came in. We still waited, we sent more emails, we did more activities, and then one day we got our first application. Susan George, I think you're very famous in Dunya because you were the first applicant. <laughs> So, <laughs> so our first few mails were like we got the third application, fifth application, ninth application, and then we weren't getting that many applications. And the deadline was in three days. And then all of a sudden, like a tornado had hit us, we got over 150 applications. And then I realized that that's what students are all about, last minute. Very, very last minute. <laughs> and that was proven again in the program. Our next problem was really that we had so many bright students to choose from. So we had panel interviews, we asked those you know, weird essay questions, as you may say. We tried everything, but we came up with what we have today, the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the Dunya Young Business Leaders 2013. And to my Dunya Young Business Leaders, I hope that after this course, you've not only learned the business fundamentals, but more importantly, we've given you a platform for self-discovery. It doesn't matter how far you may rise. You're bound to stumble along the way. But I do hope that you've learned that there's no such thing as failure. You learn from every mistake, and it only makes you stronger. I hope you've learned or you've explored who you want to be, why you want to be that person, and not want to, what you want to be. I hope you enjoyed this journey together with us over the three weeks. And also, don't forget to learn to extend yourself in kindness to those less fortunate around you whenever you can. The path is not always clear in the beginning, and don't expect clarity to come at once. But I hope that this program has planted the seeds for you to start thinking. You will have questions and doubts along the way about the path you're taking. But be guided by your passion where your true desire lies. I think you've heard that from all the entrepreneurs and all the industry experts and CEOs that you've met. You need to find your passion. You need to ask yourself where your heart lies. You need to ask what makes you alive. And I hope you can fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself. So Dunya Young Business Leaders, go out there and make a difference. And before I end my speech, I just want to ask one thing. How many of you know Rihanna? Yeah, I can see the front knows, the back doesn't know. <laughs> well, she has a very nice song, and it ends, the song is Shine Bright Tonight Like Diamonds in the Sky. So Dunya Young Business Leaders, shine bright tonight like diamonds in the sky. A big round of applause for all of you. Um, so for the parents and schools and counselors with us tonight, and, and sisters and brothers and grandparents who weren't with us, I'd like to show you a glimpse of what the past three weeks were like.
Before I hand over the mic to Rajiv, uh, I'd like to also thank the mentors. Can you stand up? <laughs> you guys did all the work over the past three weeks, and thank you for that. So, Rajiv? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, delighted to be here. And just as Miss Miriam, as you just saw her, stepped down, she quickly whispered in my ear and said, you just have five minutes. <laughs> so, so the teacher in her is going to stay with us for much longer than the Dunia Young Business Leader Program has in the first few, uh, in, the, in the first rendition of this program. As Miriam said, in some ways, I, re I, I, I echo the same sentiments. I'm delighted today, and I'm very despondent. I'm delighted because this program has been a wonderful success. It's been successful because we've been fortunate to have such an excellent, excellent, and passionate batch of young, bright students. It gives me a lot of hope. It gives me a lot of hope that this world is going to be in safe hands. I'm also delighted because we have our partners here, people who worked with us to make this possible. I'm delighted to see people who've been with us since the beginning in many ways, in many forms. I'm delighted to see friends. I'm delighted to see people that I meet outside. And I'm also delighted to meet so many people who I haven't met before. But I'm just delighted to be here today to realize that we could do it. We could make a difference. We could empower people with education, with a little bit of influence. We can hopefully enable them to be successful so that we can enrich their lives and the lives of people in this world. And I think that's something all of us have to do in one way or the other. I do think the world that we live in and the crisis has taught us is, is, is going to go through a lot of change and is going through change. And many of the things that held in the past will not hold in the future. And everyone talks about it. People use words like the new normal. No one knows what the new normal is. It's just a nice phrase to use. But what the hell, it sounds exciting and it, it's stuck. But certainly one thing I do know for sure is that the world is a different place. And all challenging and good things start with the letter D. Dunya is one of them. My emotions, the fact that I was delighted is one of them. And then I mentioned that I'm despondent too, which is another word with the letter D. I'm despondent because truly, as Miriam said, and I'm sure all of us feel the same, I wonder what the office will be like on Sunday morning. But I think the letter D has much more to do with things. The world today is far more dynamic than it was when we were youngsters. Certainly, working practices are far more diverse, another word with the letter D. And the world is getting, in, world is getting increasingly digitized. Technology is taking over. And some of us don't understand it. So clearly, we are technology naive. And the youngsters here are technology natives. And in some ways, that reflects in some of the work that they've done. But clearly, when I was young, I, I was pretty sure that I would never have a generation gap with my children. Because how could I ever have a generation gap? I was cool. Right? Many years later, as a parent of two young daughters, I realized that generation gaps are inevitable. And in some ways, that's refreshing because there's always room to learn. So as someone who's definitely, definitely, another word with the letter D, determined to succeed and thrive, not just survive in this world, at this late stage of my life, I'm determined to be young again and learn from these youngsters. And the youngsters have taught us a fair bit. I think they may have learned a lot from us and from all the inspirational speakers and all the role plays and all the study material that they got. But we've all learned a fair bit also from them. Apart from the element of hope that we've seen, we've also seen that there is so much more that we need to know about the young consumers of today, the people who shape policies, the people who are going to shape desires, people who are going to shape choices, and the people who are going to make future decisions. In some ways, they're going to shape our lives. I do want to repeat six or seven words that I use that define leadership. I told the group in the beginning, and I hope they'll never forget that. I did ask them in my first session whether they knew what leadership was all about. And this is such a bright group. They had so many words for it and so many ways to describe it. And all of them were right. So I picked my small list of six or seven words which I think define leadership. And all of them are important. And 
And I think in some ways, all these kids collectively and individually represent those values and qualities. To be a good leader, you need to be very focused, very energetic, very passionate, highly creative, very innovative, excellent in, edu in execution. You must learn how to do things. And of course, you must be very high on professional and personal integrity. So remember these words. If all these seven characteristics are present in you in some shape or form, you will help make this world a better place. The world and the universe always survives. And when we have such bright people like you, I'm sure this world will thrive. So I see new hope in this world, and I feel that things are going to get only better. We started talking about Dunya's leaders, and in some ways you become world leaders because Dunya means the world. I thought of a few words with the letter D that I'd like to leave with you today. But try and drive some of these principles, and I'm trying not to be pedantic, but I just had to tell you this. D for do. Keep doing things. Even if you make mistakes, don't worry about it. Maintain a high level of drive. Work hard. Whatever you do, the world is competitive. You will have to battle with more and more people who are going to compete with you. There are 7 billion people in the world today. In a few years, they tell us there will be 9 billion. Halfway through, they'll probably discover they made a mathematical error, and it'll probably be 10 billion. Discover. You must dare to discover. There's so much to find out. There's so much more to discover and innovate. So never give up. Diplomacy. Now, I don't mean deceit, but I mean the positive ends of diplomacy. Make sure that you can skillfully use your abilities and be able to leverage things and make things happen. Always maintain a high desire to learn and desire to do. Remember, disparity is the bane of all things. Today, the world suffers from this mad scramble of wealth and power. Everyone wants to put down the other to gain more. But if we have to survive, we have to tackle this issue of inequality. And disparity is something that each of you have to address. It is a reality that you will have to deal with. So do think about it. The earlier you think about it, the better it will be. Remember to do good. Being good. Doing good as you do business is a very, very important characteristic. Denounce. Get rid of bad habits. Try not to keep bad habits. I think the world suffered because there were a few unscrupulous individuals in the world and firms that took advantage. Discretion. Remember, it is good to be discreet. One of the things that you must realize, and hopefully you have realized, that risk will always remain. Risk never goes away. So be discreet. They say discretion is the better part of valor. So do remember that. Discerning. You're smart people. Be discerning. Don't run for the first alternative you see. Evaluate them. Be selective. There's so much more you can do. And the smart need to be smarter and need to do so much more in this world. Design. Spend more time planning out your activities and then execute to the fullest. People often start executing without thinking. So design is a very important word. Destroy. Yes, it's good to destroy. Destroy waste. Wipe out waste. It isn't good to have stuff that starts wasting resources. Sustainability is a big thing. Even your minds, your energy, your strength, the environment, and everything else that you deal with requires sustenance. And you must focus on making sure that you can destroy waste. Demonstrate. Success must be demonstrated. If you do something, don't hesitate to demonstrate it. Don't hesitate to share it. Deliver. Try and deliver predictably. As a person who runs a franchise and has run franchises before, one of the biggest things that people look for is predictability. So delivering is very, very critical. You're young, you're bright, so learn to disrupt the status quo. The world needs a disruption of the status quo. With 9 billion or 10 billion people, our current model is not going to create enough jobs for the people in the world. So you guys need to think out of the box and be willing to use creativity and innovation to disrupt the status quo. And lastly, dream big. If you dream big, and if you have all the other elements of these that I talked about, this world will certainly be a better place. So thank you all. Thank you very much for our partners. Thank you, for, thank you to the parents for trusting us with your kids for the last three weeks. Thank you to Ms. Merriam for working so hard. Thank you to Rose and Hajar for making this program a smashing success. Thank you, David. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Zafar. And, and thanks.
thanks to my friends here from Bell Pottinger, my colleagues from Dunya. Thanks to the Dunya young business leaders. Today is not your convocation. Today is your commencement. Today you're going to walk out of this room with your, held, with your heads held high. Today you're going to be known as that unique cohort of 36 young business leaders from Dunya. There aren't any more. There will be some in the future. But the first cohort will always be the first cohort. So you've established new relationships. Hopefully you made new friends. Hopefully you will never forget Dunya. We hope to see you back whenever you come back and visit us. You have a home in Dunya at any point of time. We would love to be there for you. We'd be happy to mentor you. And we'd be delighted to see you be bigger leaders in the future. Thank you very much, and God bless. Bye-bye. OK, we have um, certificates of participation to hand out, as well as some awards and awaited business plan awards. But before that, I would like to hear from students. So can I please have the five students who are speaking up here? I actually asked a couple of days ago who would like to speak at the convocation, and 18 of them raised their hands. So we had to run auditions, but we could only have a few here who represent the rest of the class. So please, Malika, Niyama, Sanjit, can you please come up one by one? Hi, my name is Malika, and I'm going to share my experience at Dunia with you. Initially, I applied because I thought it would help me learn about the business world, how to set up a company, and how you know, to learn about all the excruciating little details that go into it, which is what we did. We learned that. That's what the program was designed for anyway. But in all honesty, I think we learned more about ourselves than anything else. I mean, I know I did. <laughs> On the first day of the program, and I will remember this for the rest of my life, the CEO of Dunia said something. He said, leadership cannot be taught, but it can be discovered. And every day since, I believe in that statement just a little bit more. This program has honestly made me find so many things in myself that I never thought I had before. And on top of that, it has given us so many opportunities. It's given me opportunities not only to learn from the wonderful speakers that we had here, um, their defeats, their triumphs, and their life stories, but also to learn from the 37 other wonderful people that I met here who have all influenced me greatly. I would like to thank Dunya for um, bringing creativity, integrity, and excellence all into one program, and also for inspiring us to be better people and to be leaders. Warren Bennis once said, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. And this is truly what Dunya has taught us. It has been an absolutely exhilarating experience, and thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Sanjit. So here we are at the end of the three weeks of the first ever Dunya Young Business Leaders Program. And I know I speak for everyone when, we say, when I say we're really going to miss it, especially the lunches. I first heard about this program through an email from my counselor. I got it at a time when my exams were going on. I had a lot of stress, and I put the email in my junk. But then my mother encouraged me to look at it again, and I'm glad that I did. I found this program to be so well-structured, so well-developed, and it covered a topic that I'd never learned about before. I didn't know what it took to be an entrepreneur, and so I decided to apply. The rigorous application process only reiterated my beliefs that this would be a program well worth, well worth my time. It would keep me immersed at every second, and it did. I learned so much about the world of business and about myself throughout the past three weeks. On the first day, we were divided up into our groups, and we were told to come up with a business idea. I learned more about teamwork in that one hour than I had the entire year. And then on the second day, Mr. Rob here had us do a very interesting activity. Half of our group was blind, half of our group didn't have hands, and we were told to build a tent. My group failed miserably. But it taught us a lesson, that, a, a very important lesson. It taught us that as a group, you have to have a united vision. Without this, you will fail. Learning this very early on allowed us to um, take part in the other activities. I also want to thank all the mentors and the speakers who took time out of their busy schedules to talk to us. They taught us the difference between marketing, finance, sales, and that audit is not that boring. I know I speak for everyone when I say when Mr. Phillips talked to us, we hung on to every single word that he said. It was just phenomenal. So thank you very much. 
And I also want to thank Ms. Rose, Ms. Hajar, and Ms. Miriam for organizing such a beautiful event. And Ms. Miriam, thank you for those readings. I heard that they were very interesting. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'd like, to end, I'd like to end by saying that this program has opened up my world to the world of business and entrepreneurship. And that's something that I'll owe Dunya with forever. So thank you for such a memorable experience. Leadership cannot be taught. We have heard that quite a few times in this, in this course. Most of us did agree to this statement when it was asked. But now, standing here after three weeks, I change. I say, leadership can be taught. In these three weeks, I found those qualities of leadership that I didn't even know existed in me. And today, I stand here as a confident, proud, and focused person with a new perspective in life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all my mentors. When I sent in my application, I hardly knew what I was getting into. But after the interview, I wanted it badly. Getting selected was exciting and, frankly speaking, a little surprising. And walking into the conference room on day one was unnerving. New faces, new environments. It was my first exposure to the corporate world. I was nervous. Being the youngest here, just out of 10th grade, it was quite nerve-wracking. But then, you can only learn from people who have been there and done that. So I decided to give it my best. And then, just with a blink of eye, three weeks are over, and God, it was amazing. The speakers were so inspiring, all with a wealth of experience, listening to the journeys of life, their achievements, their failures, gave a new dimension to my views on life. We heard from how they brushed themselves up and got back on the saddle, and their success is evident in their status today. And it was not just listening to them, it was applying that knowledge. Working on our business plan right from the concept of marketing, finance, everything, etc., etc. The best was conceptualizing the commercial and shooting it ourselves with an iPad. Trust me, that wasn't easy. I learned that without passion, work is just another activity. But with the correct passion, the determination, work can be your hobby. The environment was so positive, the mentors so approachable, the trainers so experienced, and not forgetting the students, particularly my teammate. You guys were awesome. I can go on and on because I have so much to say. But I'll keep it short for now. My sincere thanks to each one of you I would like to thank Mr. Kukar a million times for taking up this initiative. People like you, you create the different world. I would also like to thank Ms. Mariam for an amazing program, and I love your dressing sense. For a budding fashion designer, it's an inspiration. Thanks, Rosalind and Hajar, for being a presence of guidance. You were a comfort to all of us, and you were so approachable. Thanks once again for this stage, this opportunity, this proud moment that I can give to all of you. Let this journey continue. I would like to be associated with all of you again. There's a lot more to learn, and association with dunya can only be done. Benjamin Franklin once said, life is an echo. You get back what you give. Thank you, and have a great evening. Hello, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us on this very special occasion of a convocation. Now, I've been asked to come up here and share my experience of this program, and I'm going to get right to it. I'd like to start by saying that this was one of the best experiences that I've had in a very long time. It was the kind of experience that changes the way you think, the way you approach situations in life. The amount and kind of knowledge that I gained from this program, I don't think I could have gotten it from anywhere else. I'd like to thank Dunya for bringing us, a group of people from various fields and backgrounds, along for this amazing experience. 
When we started out, I hardly had any idea about what was going to happen. But as the days went by, it just got more and more interesting, and I look forward to each day of it. Each of the sessions with the entrepreneurs who, had all, who all had great skills was a treasure to overflowing. Getting to know their experiences, I could relate to them and in my mind form an idea about how I wanted to go about being one. Meeting such great people and conversing with them, it, was act it, gave, it actually gave me a great insight into how they fun function and it made me aspire to be like every one of them. To simply imbibe all I could from each of them, it's almost as if they gave wings to my dreams and gave me a path to follow. The knowledge I gained about the industry and how it worked was fantastic. My hearty thanks to everyone at Dunya for giving us such a fantastic opportunity, and most importantly, Mr. Rajiv Kakkar for taking up such an initiative, Ms. Mariam El Samni for motivating us each day and keeping the momentum going, and Ms. Rosalind Naja for taking such good care of us for all the great lunches and everything. It was, it was amazing. Thank, and also our mentor, Mr. Sunil, for always helping us with any doubts that we have. With the, with the plan and everything that we had to do. I'd also like to thank the staff, all the staff at Dunya, all Mr. Kao and everyone. It was, it was great to have you all around. We could learn a lot from you guys. Over this course of 18 days, I've made friends I will keep for the rest of my life. And here's to our amazing time. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nama Hussain. My dream, when I was a young, impressionable four-year-old, was to be a window cleaner. Like the people who cleaned your windows at the petrol stations with that amazing, wiping, gliding movement, it was beautiful. I didn't know how to convince my parents to get me that hand glider, so I worked, I tried, I cleaned their cars whenever I could, just to prove to them that I could do it. They were pretty happy about mm -hmm. it, I mean, their cars were clean, although I don't think how clean their roofs were, I couldn't even reach them. That process of negotiating and working, bending over backwards and trying to prove myself, that was my first taste of business. Q Dunya, 14 years later, the program that put me in a melting pot of creativity and ideas with 37 other people right from the first day. It was intimidating, but the most invigorating experience that I've had all summer. And that's saying something, because. All summer is basically waking up at 12 p.m. <laughs> for all of us. We worked in teams to bounce ideas off each other, and we learned to respect our ideas while we worked together. We laughed out loud as we worked together, which didn't really make it work at all. And that's what Dunya gave me, a glimpse into a world that I don't even have to call work, a means to channel my vision for the future and a treasure trove of experiences that are bound to be invaluable in my future endeavors. Dunya has reminded me of my innocent dream to be a car window cleaner. No matter what I want to do in the future, be it cleaning windows someday, or as I've dreamed more recently, having my own startup, Dunya has given me the invaluable reassurance that not only is it doable, but that there are some amazing and passionate people out there, like all of you, all the fellow leaders, who are more than willing to join the bumpy ride and form brilliant teams with. So thank you, firstly, to all the fellow leaders, because you made this experience something that I could have never imagined. Thank you so much. And thank you that, to the team at Dunya, to the external speakers, for showing us that you don't even, you don't just have to live it. You be passionate, and you can dream it and make it come true. Thank you. OK, so we'll start to give out the certificates of participation. Rajiv, can you join us? Sanjay, Hajar Rose. First. Off the mark is Ashish Matthew. Arjun Malhotra. Charles Grenville. Jean Benny. Delfina Barr. Divij Patwaldan. 
Hassan Bello. Heba Naif. Henry Grenwell. Ishan Shukla. Izan Khan. Janavi Mochella. Karan Salveja. Katyaini Sharma. Kunal Bhatia. Kyle D'Souza. Leanne Montero. Malika Raghunathan. Mayur Lal. Natali Kotak. Niyama Hussain. Nihal Samuel. Pratik Nadkarni. Rajarshi Chakravarti. Ramit Agarwal. Richa Malhotra. Vidhima Sangvi. Samir Lal. Sanjit Chakravarti. Shashank Narayanan. Sumaya Yunisi Zade. Suraj Panaparambil. Sudeep Devkura. Susan George. Krishna Raj. And Xiaomin Chen. Must try harder and a grade score of D. That's what I'd reply if I was asked to assess the state of business leadership in this region. So I guess all the more reason to be delighted when there's programs such as this, the Dunia Young Business Leaders program to look forward to. I was referred to this program by a friend of mine who knew I had some youngsters. And uh, as a parent of four teenagers, all of whom finished term around the end of June from either their school or their uni. My wife and I were facing the normal problem, what on earth were you going to do with them all over the summer holidays? So it's quite a challenge, and I must confess I was 
an element of relief when I thought, well, that's three, two of them I can get rid of for three weeks. <laughs> so um, I got hold of the prospectus, and I looked at it. I thought, actually, this looks like a pretty good program. And I shared it with Henry and Charles, and they both thought the same, enough at least to be inspired to fill in the application form, which was non-trivial, rather than sit at home and watch TV for three weeks. So the application process itself, pretty rigorous. And it gave more credence to the fact that this was a, a serious course and it had some serious content behind it. So um, I wanted to share a few thoughts about uh, my impressions of the course, having had dinner table conversations over the last three weeks. Well, first of all, starting at 10 a.m. is a definite plus for a bunch of students. So that went, that went down extremely well. I think um, perhaps more importantly, and, and not surprisingly, here in Dubai, we expect a very multicultural environment. But what I found reflected to me was that it was a very warm and uh, encouraging learning environment. That's always a good place because people are far more receptive if they're having fun, as we've heard several of the students say already. In addition, the quality of the teaching and that's both from the junior staff and the expert outsiders that came in to talk. That's been reflected back to me as fantastic. These are people who are on the sharp end, they understand business, they've been there, they've done that. So it moves from being a dry theoretical exercise into something that I think uh, the students have been able to take real life lessons from. That's extremely valuable. I think as well that none of the stories and the learning have been sugar-coated. They've heard it how it is. They've heard about failures. It's far better to go forward into life with your eyes wide open than thinking it's all going to be rosy in the garden, because then when you do get knocked down, it's much harder to get up. So that is also a really fantastic lesson to, to be told. I think the range and the breadth of the topics that the students have had thrown at them and been involved in over three weeks is also excellent. A lot of this is stuff that you just, you don't pick up in school. And it, I wish I'd been on something like this when I was a lot younger than I am now. It's a great way to start your business career and your leadership career. One wonderful thing which uh, we observed over the course of the three weeks is how engaged the students were. Well, you can tell me whether you think Henry and Charles were engaged, but they certainly reflected that to us and how much they enjoyed it. They came home talking about it, they chatted about it together, they were in different teams, and they really were thoroughly into the course in a big way. That's fantastic, and it speaks volumes for the quality of the material that the teams put together. Also, I, I see in them a change, the way they're talking about future choices they may make, whether it's in uh, future study or potentially in careers. So that's a pretty strong legacy that I think the course has, has already left with uh, certainly the students I'm familiar with. So my, my 28 years in telecommunications career across Europe and the far, year, far East and eight years now in the Middle East, I've certainly come to realize the importance and the value of really top leadership and I have to say, uh, around this part of the world in particular, there are many senior executives who at best are described as good managers. I wouldn't describe them as, as good leaders. So there is a need, there is a dearth. And the good thing is, I believe leadership can be taught or discovered, to use a, a D word. So um, really, I think it's a, a big thank you and a, and a big vote of recognition to the junior team, to Rajiv, to Mariam, and all the others who I, I don't know, who've done a superb job pulling this together. We owe you all a big vote of thanks to help this next wave of leaders come through and get taught and be guided and have mentors around them to take them forward. It's really a, I think it's really a leadership desert out there. And this is a bright, shining oasis in the middle of that desert. So on behalf of the students and the parents, thank you very much indeed. Mr. Abhay Natkarni, can you join us? <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon. Ramadan Karim to everybody. 
The problem with being one of the last speakers to speak after so many people have spoken so well is that it creates some expectation in the audience. I'm just a parent. So I'm going to talk about this program that I did not attend. And my perspective is about 7 a.m. to 10 in the morning and 4 till midnight. So that's what I'm going to talk about. OK, when I first came to drop off my son's application to the Dunya office at the outsource zone, I was thinking, you know, 20 kilometers one way, you know, two times a day, 1,200 kilometers in three weeks. <laughs> Is this going to be a long shot? As parents, I must confess, we did not know what to expect. Sounded good for sure, but now three weeks are up, and I reflect at how they've gone by for our son, and we're happy that he applied, that he was selected, and finished the program successfully. Two days ago, I had an opportunity to give a ride home to about five of the participants here. It had been a long day, and I was expecting all of them to either sort of, you know, sit quietly and chill, or exchange, you know, social banter as kids their age do. But I was to be wrong on all counts. No discussion on sports, no football, no cricket, no tennis, no discussion on music, not even girls. <laughs> it was all business as if they had not had enough at the end of a six-hour packed day. And I quote some of that conversation. <laughs> How much profit did you make? <laughs> you know what? We were making 16 million profit in the third year. <laughs> and then, and then our mentor found a mistake, and it was down to two million. <laughs> Dude, do you think one million downloads after three years is too much? <laughs> it was brilliant. The conversations over dinner table, you know, these last weeks have also been kind of different. Tell me about assets and liabilities, Dad. What do you mean profit is a liability and loss is an asset? And finally, forget it, Dad. You don't know anything. <laughs> we were a little, little bit concerned about our son, who is 16 years old, by the way, that he might be a bit young, perhaps overwhelmed amongst his colleagues who were older and probably knew more than him. But we needn't have worried, because every day he came back very happy, with what he had learned, looking forward to the next day, never complaining about the homework, or even staying back to complete some of the group work. Clearly, whatever you guys were telling them or making them do, he was loving it. And I even discovered something that he and I finally agreed on. <laughs> that audit is not very exciting. <laughs> But to get a little bit serious now, a little bit about the program, and this is my perspective as a parent. This program is very unique. It's very different from the run-of-the-mill internships that you get around town when kids come back from college or want to do something in the summer. It is unique in that you almost know at the beginning what your child will know at the end of the program. And that's not what happens in normal internships. You know, you go to an institution for a month. There is a program that the HR department has set up for you. Every day, a new department. Every day, a small orientation, a manual to read. If you have any questions, don't feel shy to ask. A compressed 30-minute uh, a day interaction with the managers because they're too busy to talk to you with their own work. The onus is on the intern to explore, discover, and learn on his own. 
or her own. Not so at Dunya, and that is a good thing. You got a total perspective from all sides of a business, not what you discovered along the way, but what you had to know. And that was the difference. You don't come to the program to discover. You will know what you need to know. And that was very nice of uh, the organizers to do. It was a full day's work every day. Congratulations, Dunia, for sponsoring this initiative. Congratulations, Rajiv, Mariam, I can't take everybody's names, but the entire team for a very well-conceived, well-executed program, and, of course, for having our son. And to conclude, I would just like to say, I was reflecting as I was listening to all the speeches, what was I doing when I was a teenager this age? And something that Mariam said struck a chord. You know, there was some commonality and a lot of difference. Today, you're talking about shining bright like diamonds in the sky. In our days, it was Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Thank you. We're very blessed to have a few of our partners in crime or a few speakers who are part of the program and met with the students. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Rob Day up, CEO of Turnaround.ae. And Rob actually uh, spent two full days with us, two phenomenal days of team building work with you know, objectives about leadership and communication. And he'll tell you a bit about it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm feeling that my speech is a little short, uh, judging by the length of some of the ones that have come ahead. But I wanted to just tell the parents kind of what we've done um, on the two days that I, that I shared with them. Uh, we run a, a team building company, and uh, our focus is experiential learning, which is the idea of learning through doing and learning through acting. The program that we did, which was on the second day for them, is by far the toughest leadership simulation that we have and that we have ever seen uh, globally. And we, uh, for me, it was a bit of an experiment to see whether or not the, uh, the, the younger generation would take to it in the same way that the older generation uh, would do. And a couple of things came out for me that were very, very interesting. The first thing was, is that they actually did pretty much as well as good as most of the corporates that we work with which was interesting. Um, yeah, you can give yourselves a clap if you want. <laughs> the, um, the second thing, and this is, this is really what got to me, was that they, they would give the same learnings that we would see from a group of people 20 or 30 years their senior. Now, this means one of two things. Either these guys are particularly bright, or why are the big corporates still making the same mistake 30 years on? And, and, and this, this, to me, embodies everything that this program was about. And this is what Mariam's asked me to talk about. What, what's my view on it? And it's to give people the opportunity that all of us would have loved to have had 20 years, 20, however many years ago it was for you now, um, and to give, to give the young generation, give something back to them and give them the opportunity to experience the things that that nowadays some of my clients are only just experiencing now, and yet these guys are at the beginning of your, uh, of your journey and your vision. For me, it's been genuinely an absolute pleasure. I are we doing it next year? Definitely. Definite? Okay, I was just checking that. But if we, if, if, if we are, I'm, I'm on board 100%. For me, it was a, a, a fantastic use of, of a couple of days of my time. It's been great. I hope, I hope that the, the kids had a good time as well, and we certainly did. And thank you very much. We'll see you next year. <laughs> Okay, our next speaker is uh, Zafar Yunus. Zafar is the CEO of the online project. <laughs> Zafar also uh, spent a couple of days with us um, in the program, and I've never seen the students as excited, barring one, a couple of other sessions. So, welcome, Zafar. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zafar Yunus. I run a young company called the Online Project. And uh, Mariam asked me to take part uh, in the Dunya Young Business Leaders Program. And I didn't actually know what to expect. I, I think I've learned more than the students did in those two sessions that I, I gave. Uh, around two months ago, I downloaded an application on my iPhone. It's called Sumly. Uh, this application helps you read the news in a faster way. 
So instead of reading the whole article, the application would summarize that piece of news. You would read it in like 20 seconds max. Then I was reading a bit of news about Samli that it got sold to Google just six months after it was founded for $30 million. This was just uh, a month ago. And then I read that the founder and the CEO was 17 years old. And I was just, I couldn't imagine how, how would a 17 year old build a company and exit, first get funded and then exit in six months for $30 million and actually change the lives of people around the world. Like the, the way I actually consumed the news totally was different after I downloaded this app. And I kept thinking about it. I couldn't imagine who can do such a thing. Uh, I think the mystery was solved when I walked into that room. I met 38 people that I truly believe could come up with such applications and with such startups. I, 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 really, I, I really feel the generational gap, and I don't just believe that you guys are faster in using the internet and are better than in using the internet. I also believe you can build faster companies and you can build better companies than any other generation before you. So please, really, go and start your own thing as soon as you can. And as we all agreed, in a couple of years' time, you either have a story or you have an excuse. And I'm sure you're all going to have amazing stories. So all the best of luck. And thank you so much. Finally, I'll ask Mr. David Phillips, uh, CEO of Freight Systems, to come up. And David was also uh, kind enough to spend the whole day with us today. He was one of the judges. So if you don't like the outcome, you can blame David. <laughs> Thank you, Mariam. Uh, talk of expectations. All this clapping, being the last speaker, great speakers before me. Uh, I'm actually a little nervous. Do you believe that, guys? No? Come on. Uh, I was called in uh, to speak with the kids, to talk to the kids about my life experiences, very early in the program. Uh, not many people call me to do these things, so whenever I am, I grab that opportunity, and I do that. Uh, from the first day that I spoke with them, and then today I was called in to be a part of the panel that judged all these business plans and business cases that they put forward. And between these three weeks, I realized that, gosh, I run a big company, but am I doing it right? <laughs> these kids had pre presentations, business plans, analytics. They've covered the market, every single corner, analyzed every risk. And I sat there thinking, God, I got to change something in my company soon. Because if these guys become competitors, I'm out of business. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful experience to see young minds at work, to see young minds challenged, to see when they are challenged, uh, what they come up with, uh, despite lack of sleep, or in spite of lack of sleep. Uh, and it's exhilarating. Uh, interfacing, interacting with, with these kids. Uh, and at the end of today, I realized that a lot of these ideas that have been created along simulated businesses that in, in the groups that were there, uh, I left the room with an ability that I could get healthy food if I wanted it, <laughs> delivered at my doorstep, uh, ordered on the internet, didn't have to talk to anybody, paid for it, and I ate healthy. I could visit a facility where I could shake a leg, dance a little bit, exercise, listen to music, play foosball, uh, or I could exchange information about myself in ways that we, we don't even dream about all in one day. That's the world we live in. That's the world these young kids are going to take us into. Uh, the program is called Young Leaders, Dunya Young Leaders. And these are truly young leaders. 
They've, they will shape the world. Uh, they have no inhibitions about thinking. They don't know what thinking in a box means. They only think outside the box, and that's the difference. Uh, the story that I told them was about my life, hopefully lending some insights that will help them going forward uh, with the little you know, potholes that you stumble in and, and climb out of when you, when you can. Uh, I'm an example of someone who possibly climbed out of a few potholes and is standing here today. But that doesn't take away the fact that a lot of people that went into those potholes that didn't come out didn't work hard enough. They did. They absolutely did. It's just that sometimes the timing is wrong, luck is not on your side, and it just worked for me. So I'm eternally grateful, but reflecting upon all that, and my job was to try and mentor them and give them a few uh, ideas or guidances of, of what's ahead and what would make them different. And I passionately believe that these uh, are, are, are differentiators. You know, after spending quite a few years on this earth, uh, I've, I've actually learned it by experience, got knocked around a bit. But the key words, and this is back to you kids to remind you about the importance of, of what passion is, of what happiness is, about attitude. We'll teach you business. We cannot teach you attitude. That's in your DNA. So these are important. You will forget about it. So write it down somewhere. Stick it somewhere on the wall around where you study and look at it once in a while and try and bring that back into your life, wherever you can, and, and associate a perspective of life around those words because they will remain important all through your life. Uh, differentiation is, is key. I repeat it again. When you differentiate yourself, you're telling the world, I am different, so treat me different. And demand to be treated different. But when you differentiate yourself, you have to think of why that differentiation happened and the value you bring with that differentiation. Uh, a lot of you all are going to go to very fancy schools. You all will be taught the latest methods of business or any angle of, of, of education that you decide to go under, go through. Uh, but that's only one part of education. The other part of education is life skills. Academics is one part, and me personally, I place a little extra weight on the other side of life which contributes to education. So don't forget to do that. Don't forget to live life. Don't forget to be happy. Uh, remember you have one life. And it's short in today's world. Everything is short. Whatever we try to do, we never have enough time to do. So make sure you're happy. Make sure you're happy in what you do. If you're not happy in what you do, find something that makes you happy. Finally, a few words of thanks to Dunia. Uh, I really do appreciate Rajiv Mariam asking me to come and be part of this wonderful initiative. Uh, we talk of leaders, uh, the future leaders. One of the parents said, this part of the world lacks it. I agree 100%. Uh, leaders like, like Rajiv have set the tone. Somebody's going to carry on with this. So this is an example he sets to all of us. And I'm a lot older than he is, but I feel a little inadequate on that front. You guys should never feel in inadequate. And remember what leadership is. Take the initiative and become a leader. You walk out today as leaders. You were chosen into this program because you are identified as being different, as being potential leaders. So go out and make your families and yourselves proud. Parents, the apple never falls far from the tree. Congratulations. Focus, energy, passion, teamwork, creativity, integrity, innovation, execution, excellence, and collaboration. I think you've heard Rajiv and many of our speakers say these words and throughout the sessions. 
So we have a few Dunya Young B Business Leadership Awards that we would like to hand out. I'd like to invite Rob Zaffer and Tristan Penison-Bird from Bell Pottinger to join us to give out those awards. <laughs> and this is a person who has really shown a lot of participation in the class and engagement with students, engagement with colleagues. Not to say that everybody else didn't, but this person really stood out. And that goes to... The Dunia Young Business Leadership Through Engagement Award goes to... Redeemer. Thank you. Our next award is for Perseverance. So the Dunya Young Business Leadership Award through Perseverance. And this is an individual who has really strived to understand the material, to go back, to read it, to come to all of us, to come to the mentors, to come to myself, to rehearse presentations and do various things. And this award goes to... Chowman Chen. Chowman Chen. The next Dunya Young Business Leadership Award is Leadership Through Diligence. And this is an individual, again, who worked very long hours with her team, her or his team. <laughs> and uh, so the award for personal diligence goes to... I'd like to thank you for my first appearance uh, at the Oscars. And the Academy Award goes to <laughs> Heba Nayat. Heba Nayef. Our next award is for Junior Young Business Leadership through Charisma. So an individual who has managed to, again, work with his or her team and convincing them and swaying them one way or the other. Um, has become one of the friends of everybody in the class, persuasive skills, and the award goes to? It says um, Poser here. Have I got a different one? Poser. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, yeah. the, the Poser, business leadership yes, for charisma goes to Hassan Bello. Our next award is for Dunya Young Business Leadership through Focus. And again, this individual has really portrayed that throughout the three weeks. Uh, she or he has worked very long hours, took on a lot of work from the group, and the award goes to? Shiyan Penny. Shiyan Penny. <laughs> Mrs. Penny, you can come on stage. You can come on stage. <laughs> Our next award is for Dunya Young Business Leadership through energy. A person who, again, has managed to energize his or her team constantly and all the time throughout the three weeks, and that goes to... Izan Khan. Get up here. Our next award for Dunya Young Business Leadership is through passion. Somebody who's constantly researching things, discussing things, engaging with the team, engaging with the class, and that goes to... Sudeep Devbura. <laughs> Our next award is for Dunya business, Young Business Leadership through Integrity. And this is someone This is someone who has shown integrity in everything and has done the readings, I'm sure. And that award goes to? Sanjeev.
Sanjit, so despite what you said, I know you did the readings. Our next award for Dunya Young Business Leadership goes to um, for the person who is with the highest level of innovation uh, has shown us that throughout the three weeks. And that goes to John Sri Chakraborty. Execution excellence. So our next award for Dunya Young Business Leadership is for someone who has really executed with excellence. And that goes to... Uh, Malika. Our next award is for creativity and a person who has shown that they're always creative coming up with new ideas within their group and amongst, stands out amongst the rest of the students is for creativity, close to? Delfina Boer. Our final Dunia and Business Leadership Award goes for collaboration. So a person who has shown us the highest level of collaboration and engagement within the team. And that goes to? The meat. Our next award is really a group award. And um, every team was asked to come up with an audiovisual for their team, for their business. So I'm sure the parents haven't seen that because I'm sure maybe you're not on Facebook. <laughs> They're all posted on Facebook. But I'd like to play them out for you. They're very short audio AVs that uh, Rob had worked with the teams on. And uh, we'll announce the winners after this. Sorting cards is frustrating. <laughs> Introducing Carnival. Respecting traditions. Building connections. We floated this around to uh, several people in the management team, the mentors and everybody. Mentors were not allowed to vote for their own groups. So uh, that's how these were judged. So the runner-up for the best audiovisual is... Cardibo. Well done, guys. Now, the winners for the best audiovisual are... According to our official judging panel, the winner goes to Rising Stars Talent Agency. leadership award for the male and for the female so it wasn't our vote but it was the students vote on who they thought showed all those characteristics of leadership the most I think uh, looking at the results it was a tough call but uh, we have two winners so the Dunya Outstanding Leadership Award for the male goes to Dunya Outstanding Leadership Award male who does it go to? You're right. <laughs> Henry Grimmel. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you very much. And the Dunya Outstanding Leadership for the female goes to... Neema Hussain. Woo!
David and Rajiv are trying to act young, it doesn't suit them. <laughs> the most impactful presentation in terms of covering all the content and in, you know, the most creative and impactful presentation. And that goes to... Food Runners. So, the runner-up for the new business plan venture award goes to. Well, like Tristan, this is my first Grammy. So, wait, say that. The runner-up for the Dunya new venture business plan goes to Food Runner. <laughs> Congratulations, guys, again. Now for the grand prize. Okay, our final, the business plan, what we've all been working for on the past three weeks, multiple presentations. And David is going to finance this one. I'll be an investor, <laughs> an investor, the, it was such a hard job, but as Mariam says, you got to make a decision, and as leaders, we got to make a decision, we made a decision, that decision is activity central. <laughs> Well done, guys. Well done, guys, for a great job. So, I'd like to end by thanking everyone once again. Can I just say that over the past three weeks, three people have been with us day in and day out. And we cannot even imagine the noise and all the activity that they had to put up with. And we're really, really thankful to all of them. Ms. Mariam Osamni, Ms. Hajar, and Ms. Rosalind. Thank you so much to all of you.